Welcome back to the Coloring Book Channel. Today, I found this sketch of from a, a time, long time ago, where some boys and girls were out skating on the ice, and there was a danger sign for thin ice, but that was ignored, and a couple of them fell in. So the lesson learned was supposed to be, don't rush in where there's a danger sign. So I thought I'd take a crack at coloring this sketch and see how it turned out. So you can come along with me as I select the colors. I have no idea what I'm going to start out with, uh, except maybe I'm going to start out with some of the kids wearing brown and, and drab clothes and some wearing bright colors. So I'm going to start with that and work my way through the ice and then the cool blue sky and then the leaf, the trees without leaves. So come along with me. We'll see how this turns out. First, I've got a wide array. I'm gonna do this with markers. Thought I would take a shot at it with markers and see how that turned out and then go from there. So as I said, I'm gonna start out with some markers and some brown colors. And so I found this color here. This is light camel. Uh, and I'm just going to start with a really light brown on this young gentleman's brown or on his jacket. And see how it turns out. I'm going to really stick, I'm going to try and really stick with light, light colors the first time on this sketch and then go darker if I need to. I've found using markers I tend to get too dark a clothes to start with, and then I can never recover from that. And it's not quite as true for colored pencils. If you use colored pencils, if you get it a little too dark, you can erase, and that will lighten it up a little bit, and then you can add other color on top of it. Because, um, all things, even clothing and stuff, have shades of coloring in them. They're three-dimensional. And so you try and want to capture that in your coloring. So here I made a nice camel-colored jacket, which I really like. You'll see that this young man is pretty snappily dressed. He's wearing a, a tie and a and a um, vest, which clearly this, pic this picture reflects a time from, I don't know, the early 1900s, where young men would go out ice skating wearing uh, what looks like a dress coat and a vest. Now, I picked a red because I wanted to bring out his shirt or his tie. And I decided I, I did that red rather hastily. It was a lot darker than I really wanted it to be. But what's a man to do? So now I'm going to try and stick with light colors again. And I'm going to go back to his shirt. And this color is eggshell, which of course is a little bit of a white, vanilla white. And I'm going to do his, his shirt that color and stick, stay away from getting too much red. Okay, so I did that and that turned out okay for now. And now let's give him some, let's color his hair. And I'm going to go with a, this is the light suntan is what this color is called. These markers here, these silamoons are new for me. I purchased these to give me a lot more facial colors and hair colors and human part colors. And I'm still experimenting with them. And so this is going on. It looks kind of like a light tan, tanish brown. So a little more brown than I thought it would be, but I think that'll work. Um, I'm gonna go now for his skin. I'm gonna go with a really light color. So these so far haven't been that light. But as you can see, I got a bunch of flesh-toned colors. 
So I'm going to go with a, how about this, a baby skin pink. That sounds interesting. Use the sharp end here of my markers. Okay, so I'm putting a skin color on. Even this is a little darker than I expected. <laughs> he looks just a little bit freaky with that color, but I think what I'll do is I will let it dry. A lot of times when you are coloring with markers, if you let them dry, they sometimes dry to a lighter color than uh, when they initially went on. So we can give that a shot. He looks a little yellow in this picture. So I think what I will do is I'll let that sit and go on. I'll go on to his, his buddy who's skating with him. And I can't tell if that's a boy or a girl on this, but I'm going to start with this orchid on this hat under the assumption. Whoa, that's way too dark. So I'm going to switch over to a pale purple. And that first color was more like a highlight color I would use. This, this one here is more of what I was looking for. I'm going to try that. Not too bad. I'm going to put this one back in there so I don't pick it up by accident. And now, I'm not sure, but I'm going to go ahead and make this person's hair yellow and see if that will stand out a little bit more than what I was doing before. There's some nice yellow for the hair. Again, for the facial tones, I'm, I'm going to go even lighter with a pale pink for the facial um, color. And that's got a little bit of red in it, this pink. So this looks a little better than the boy over here who looks a little bit like a zombie or something coming out of the ice. He's certainly scared. And so I may want to reflect that by having some red in his his skin. But I got that going. Now let's pick a color for the jacket. And I will go with a really light. Let's see if I can find like a really light green. I want to stay away from the blues because I'm going to make this water here blue. So this is a really light green, but it's kind of a blue green. It's called mint, but that's okay. I'll stick with the mint. This might be more of a brighter color than they typically wore in these days, but um, I can liven them up a little bit if I want. So there's the green jacket. And you can see they got some pretty heavy winter clothes on to go ice skating in. But what they really needed to do is pay attention to this danger thin ice sign. And that looks pretty good for now. Um, now I'm going to get this water around them, and I'm going to, I'm going to go with this pastel blue for this part of the water. We'll see what it looks like. Just do a little bit right here. Whoa, that's really dark. See how dark that is? That's, if you ever uh, come across water, it's usually not quite that blue. I'm going to change this to an ice blue and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's better. 
And so this ice is actually, if you look at it, it looks like it's about two to three inches thick. So that seems like it should have been strong enough to hold these, these kids. Kids don't usually weigh that much and they move pretty quick. If you move across the ice quickly, then it may not break under you, but um, you always want to be extremely careful around ponds in the winter and make sure you don't drift out on them without testing the, the ice. So you always want to get an adult's permission to go out on the ice and let the adult go out and usually you take a, a bar or something and try and poke a hole in the ice. If you can't get a hole at all then it's pretty thick but uh, if you try and make a hole and it's four inches thick or something like that usually that's okay on a very small pond. But even having very thick ice on the edges, uh, when you're on, especially on a large pond, that ice can get really thin in certain spots because there can be warm spots in the water which you're not aware of when new water's flowing in. comes in underneath, melts that ice, and so it's a lot thinner than it looks. But I like the color of this ice. It's turning out pretty nice. I've got, um, I'm coming right up to the edge of the, the ice here. i put this in here now, and then I have to decide what to do with the ice. Of course the ice will be white, so i got to pick out a color of white that will show to make this interesting, but not be so dominant that it's overpowers the blue here. So that looks pretty nice. Going back here and touching up the edges. Now I may go back through here with yet a darker blue and hit a few spots to add some color. And of course I'm going to do all of this ice, so I've got to deal with that. But not yet. For now I'm going to leave that. I'm going to pick out because I don't really like coloring white. I'm going to pick out like a gray and see what that looks like on the edges of this ice. Yeah. Yeah, see how that turned out? That looks nice. I mean, it's gray. And most of the time you don't think of ice as gray. But it's kind of really a white gray. And if I put that right along the edges, it looks more real. It gives it more of a three-dimensional look. So I like how that's turning out. Let me come up here to the front and do that. But this, this coloring goes pretty fast because while there's a lot of detail on this picture, it, um, much of it's already kind of shaded in for me, but they haven't picked colors, just penciled in. So I'm putting the shading in, um, or some color in, but I'll have to go back and decide what shading needs to look like. You can see here there's water dripping off of this young man, and uh, so something needs to be done about that, but I don't know what to do with that yet. So right now, this all looks pretty good. I'm going to step up here and get some brown and paint this danger sign. Let's see what this, this is something called T Rose. So I'm going to take that and try this on this danger sign and see what comes out of here. that color but then as it kind of settled on the paper I kind of do like it it's almost an orange brown but it it gives it the color 
of the sign, but it doesn't overpower the, the drawing. So again, with markers, rule is always start with light, light color. Even that is a little darker than I want it to be. Because I'm going to go over that and bring out the danger. I hesitate to use black because black almost never uh, wants to be used because it just covers up and doesn't bring out. But I'm going to use this low. I'm going to use this dark brown, but you can see even that dark brown. Oh, that's dark. But I was really careful with the danger. Sun in the dark. I won't use that anymore. That brown. Um, but I do want to put a little shading on that. So I'm going to pick a super light brown and add a little bit of shading and see what happens. That wasn't enough. Maybe that brown. We'll see how that looks. I'll let it dry for a little bit. We'll see how that brown turns out. Now will be a really good time to take a shot at coloring for these two girls here. They look really fancy and dressed up nicely uh, to be out ice skating. So I'm going to try and see if I can add some color to it without wrecking this beautiful sketch. This person I'm going to put with a pink scarf. And I think that starts okay. And I might give her a looks like she's holding a rod that you use to test the thickness of the ice. You see that? It's kind of right there. And she's the one who tested it and said, this ice is not thick enough, so stay away from there. But I put that, I tried to color that rod in and it's not dark enough because you can't see it. Back over with another color. Even that gray is not good enough. Making darker and darker grays as I go. We're going to try and make this rod stand out in her hand. There we go. I think that's probably as good of my as a, as good as I'm going to get. scarf. So what color hat should she be wearing? And she's got a skirt on and looks like pants. So I don't know, maybe that's a boy, I can't tell. Uh, but I think I'll use some browns here. In this day and age, people wore lots of brown. Colors were expensive make. Not everybody had them. Okay, so now I've got a little pipe, pipe brown going here. And I'm going to, it looks like she's got some gloves and mittens on. So I'm going to save that. Go 
love and color it a different color. that have a lot of existing shading because it makes it hard to see what's going on and what other colors might be should be used there so like right here right here you can see there's a tiny bit of a vest or something and I can't tell if that's a of a shirt. Now, if that's part of this, this overcoat. helped or hurt. But I'm going to draw the same color on the gloves. Okay, I think you can almost see those gloves from now. And now I'm going to go down here and color her legs and the pants with this darker, this is called potato brown. So it's like more like the skin of the potato than the inside of the potato. And so it's, it's kind of a pretty brown. But again, once you put it on, you can't really cover up much. Now, <clears throat> oh, I need a color for her hat. Hat, hat, hat. And hair color. Because this picture is so dark, I'm going to start with a, a yellow color for the hair here. Just to try and get some lighter colors in the picture. And then maybe go with that pink scarf again and just put it on her hat. So she got a nice hat and scarf combo. Not really sure I used the right color there. It didn't look like as red as what I thought it was. Ah, but anyway. And then I need a color for her skates. You can see that she's got some ice skates on. And ice skates would have typically been brown or black in those days. They wouldn't have had colored skates. So let me see what this looks like. That's supposed to be a brown. But it, uh, I was gonna say it doesn't look like it's gonna be dark enough, but now that I look at it, I think, yeah, maybe it is. And of course I gotta get, I think I'm gonna make her skates the same color. can see even the same color looks a lot darker on her just because of the existing shading that they put on there. But I'm going to, I need to do something with the skates itself. I need the skates to stand out. I 
to put it back and give me a dig. Just gray here and see if I can run in this ice skate. The ice skate almost disappears in this sketch. Okay. So there's those two things. I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put some nice lime green on this gal's jacket. Cause I'm thinking she's fancy. And we want a super cool outfit. If this little bit of color here does not overshadow the whole sketch and lightens up the pad, then I can still come back and add some shading. I don't think I'm going to be doing much shading on this drawing just because it's got so much already that the difference in the way the color goes on in the spots where it's dark versus the place where the, it's kind of white. It just looks different already. So it doesn't need a lot of shading. The other thing you'll notice, I am using a, a board here to keep my colors from bleeding through onto the next picture and ruining that one so I can't use it. Okay, so there's a green top for her. And I'm gonna go with a, a really light brown for her long part of her skirt. Just because what's gonna go with green better than brown? Take suggestions on that. There we are. That looks good. And sometimes when I'm editing the video, I see things that, that jump out to me that I missed when I was um, coloring. And so I add, I'll add that in as a, with a sticker or something on the, in the video screen. So now this is kind of tricky here because she's wearing some kind of hat. But it's really difficult to tell where her hat ends and her hair begins. But I'm going to do the hat like that. I'm going to give her yellow hair as well. Sorry, a lot of yellow haired girls here today, but. Anything else, if I use anything darker, then her hair just turns into a muddy mess. And I'm gonna give her a facial tone. Got all these markers here with nice various colors. This one is called Milky White. So these Sailor Moon markers, you see, I ordered a set of flesh tone markers. So it came with like 25 markers for lots of flesh tones. Some from pink to, to brown to um, hazel. And so I'm still experimenting with what those look like. But I think that turned out pretty nice. So now I'm going to pick up these boys in the background. You can see there's two boys back here. And they are rushing to the aid of the girls and the guy who went through the ice. They'll need to be extremely cautious because the closer they get, they're adding more weight to the ice and it could wreck and make it worse. Um, I'm gonna put some 
Indian blue pants on this young guy here. See how that looks. Okay. And then his buddy, I'm gonna stick with a more light brown salmon kind of color for his jacket. And I'll have his hat match his jacket. And then now he needs to have a little bit of color for his pants. Make it slightly darker brown. And there we go. Now they need some flesh tone color. I've kind of been trying lots of different ones. This one's called Silk. And we'll just put their faces to be kind of silk. Okay. Now I'm ready to work on this ice. So I do have an ice blue. I think that's what I used here. I got an ice blue and a pastel blue. And I have some blue grays. So I'm a little torn at what to use. Here's my color match chart. And I think I want to use like ice blue to baby blue. Yeah, ice blue to baby blue. What do you think? I'm going to start with the ice blue. This might have been what I used here. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll take a tiny bit and touch through here and see. No, this is actually a different color than that. Hmm. I'm a little torn. And once I brush it on here, there's no going back. I think maybe I'll start with this super light gray that I used before. Let's see what this looks like. That's not light enough. How about this one? Yes. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'll start back here on the edge of shore and make this ice kind of gray white. See that? I think that gray white is looking nice. And it's light enough, if I want to give it a little different tint, I still have room to do it. I mean, I could even use a lighter yet. But as I look at my color chart, I think this is the lightest gray I have. Okay. I'm gonna take this right up to the edge. So there's two ways to approach your coloring. One is to spend a lot of time up front looking at each part of the picture and deciding what, doing some tests and deciding what colors to use. And the other way is just pick and then work out what the color contrasting colors need to be as you go. And that's usually the method I use because I get bored trying to pick out all of the colors, write them down, because you gotta write them down so you keep track of what you thought you would do for each one. And I find that part, that part of an exercise in coloring tedious. So, 
instead I just pick a color and go with it. Now I'm gonna have a little bit of difficulty here because I'm using all of this light gray on the, on the ice. And then I'm gonna to have to decide what do I do with the snow that's up there? Because you can see I got a lot of snow up on the hilltop. But I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. I'll take a look at what I got and see if there's another shade I can work in there. Now when I do these strokes, I'm trying to keep them all, the, each stroke, going in the same direction. And that should make them uh, blend in together better so that you don't see the stroke marks as much. The stroke marks are not very attractive. And so it's nice if you can minimize how many of those show up on your coloring projects. I'm kind of painting it, doing short little sections at a time. I'm going down the page, but almost in a circular fashion so that I avoid stroke marks. Sometimes I end up with a project when I'm all done. I got lots of stroke marks, usually in the sky or something. And after it dries, I go, oh, I don't really like how that looks. But once the video is done, it's done. So if you go back and look at my older videos, they are pretty basic and as I go I've been learning what techniques are more effective and will make for a more pleasant drawing when it's finished and I also uh, probably like some of you look at other people's uh, YouTube videos of coloring projects and see what they do. There's some who have a really good sense of color uh, and they blend these markers and colored pencils very nicely. Uh, I'm a little jealous at their skill, but I watch their videos, learn some things, and I try those things the next time I work on my videos. And of course you, I'm sure, do the same. But I try and make these videos as interesting and informative as possible. When I do a lot of commentary, then the video gets really long. And so then usually I will make a fast version of the same video and just cut out all the commentary. And that way if you wanna see the finished product go together very quickly, you can look at that. And in five to 10 minutes, it's all colored and, and done. This can be a little tedious unless you're just kind of letting it run and relaxing and saying, I wonder what this is, what's up to there today. I spend a lot of time after the coloring is drawn, picking out music that has the mood of the picture. This will be a little different. Normally I have to try and get fairly calm music, relaxing, or if I'm doing something with Paw Patrol or those, maybe I'll make it really exciting music to demonstrate those little pups are in action. But something like this, because there's this, this picture has some danger in it. These kids have to be rescued out of this water pretty quickly or it won't turn out well for them. And so the one with the stick in the hand probably was a pole for testing the ice. Probably knows what, what to do here. And that is to lay down on the ice, go find a stick, and then lay down on the ice and hold that stick out and see if the, they can grab it and you can pull them out. Because uh, if you walk over the edge, that ice is likely to break. And then there'll just be more of you in the ice that need to be rescued. So this is a really tricky situation. The danger sign is 
not here for no reason. It is certainly a dangerous situation. I've ice, ice skated a lot. Well, I say a lot. <laughs> not in the last 20 years. But in the past, I've ice skated. And I never really had a problem where we broke through the ice. So that's very nice. If it gets cold enough for long enough, the ice will be nice and thick. And you can navigate on it without any concern. But you definitely need an adult to, to do that first. And of course, if the adult tests the ice and then they go out on it first... And usually two or three adults are doing this together so they can rescue somebody if something goes bad. Then they test the ice, and if they can stand on it and it's all well, then it's good for kids. Okay, so now I've kind of got all of this gray snow ice here. I have a few things I'm going to try and do with this, but I also want to get some of this far back ice here, where these guys are at, with this, this color. skating on water but um, let the blue color of the ice kind of come through here so we'll do a little just a touch of that because this thing looks kind of boring with all this gray in it okay so I still need to do something with this boy's face here. It he looks very yellow. So I'm going to go back over this with a flush tint. Let's see if I can add some red to his skin. That looks better. I'll do the same for his hands. Give him a little bit of red in his hands. He doesn't look quite like a zombie. I may still come back yet again with an even lighter color, but I'll let that dry first. Now, I need to get these trees done in the back. And another light brown. I really like having these black markers with lots of browns and stuff. I can use for... And one of the things I've found is you need a lot of browns. There's a lot of browns in the world, but those browns are um, subtle and varied. And so if you get a bunch of browns, then you have the ability to make things look realistic. And there you go with the trees. I was just going to color one of the trees, but I think this brown here is nice enough and light enough. But I can just kind of do it all. This brown. And then I'm going to go back with another brown. Or maybe even green for this part, so that these might be pine trees. And do it right over the top. Let's see if I can get a blended color that looks good. I don't do that much with markers because it doesn't look as successful, but I think it might be with these. Get out, get off my way. A lot of times, if you can, it's good to color the whole thing kind of a background color. 
and then layer the other colors on top. That requires a lot of planning. But I think I'll be able to do that with this one. definition to the trees but that brown was just a bit too dark so as a result it's kind of messed up my tree let's see if I can find another brown I can blend in there kind of bring that back under control yet but it's getting there over here I'm pretty confident these are pine trees so I'm going to mix in some green right on the edges since pine trees are kind of rough around the edges I'm doing it kind of like a scribble mark. We'll see if that comes off well or not. The green is really dark, and so I need it to blend. I'm going to try this blending marker and see if I use it it will blend some of these colors in. They provide us these white blending markers to do just this. I've never really had much success with them. Maybe because I make too big of a mistake before I bring in the blending marker. And so therefore it's really hard to fix. But I'm hoping I can get in some lighter colors. Take the edge off here. And this won't be quite as much of a distraction. here and all these pencils I got that I've already used. Let's see if I can pick out a color that will look good in the snow. I need a super light blue. A super light blue. I have this gray which I already used this cool gray all over. I thought I had a 
Yeah, let's try this one. Let's try this ice cream. Okay, that looks a little better. I need a, a lightest blue yet to do this to the sky. actually a little green but I'm just stroking it in like that I'm gonna make it pretty dark down here where these are and call these pine trees I'm hoping by making them all fairly dark and kind of jagged but they'll look like pine trees when all is said and done. And then I'll get a little bit of blue. I have a sky blue here somewhere. Pastel blue might work. What do you think about pastel blue? sky. Uh, now, I have this tree over here. It needs a little bit of attention. I don't want to make the mistake I made with this other tree. I'm making it too brown. It's winter time, so there's no leaves on the tree. Shadows darker. Okay. I 
think that will just about do it. I might take a pale yellow and put a little bit of sun in the sky. See if that helps. run this yellow through this blue so that it looks more like either blue clouds rather than something else. But I think I'll take this pad out of here and I think I'll call this done. 